So if you're looking to start a social media marketing agency and you want to get your first client as soon as possible, here are six things I did to get two clients in my very first week. Now, just for some context, I got my very first client now over five years ago, and I've been running a marketing agency for five years. Now it's fantastic. We're at a point where we've got 100 clients, we've got an in-house team, we've worked with some household names, celebrities, and influencers. But in the beginning, it was a lot more difficult. So the first tip that I have for you, which literally allowed me to get my first two clients in the first week, is that I actually used Upwork.com to get those clients. Now, if you're not familiar, Upwork.com is actually a freelance website. And essentially, it's a freelance website where companies or individuals go on there and post job openings. They look for online support from contractors, freelancers, and agencies from around the world. So I actually stumbled upon this platform over five years ago, and I found hundreds and thousands of people actively looking for help with social media marketing services. So I found tons of people like, hey, I'm looking for help with social media management for my dental business. I'm looking for support running Facebook ads for my restaurant. And because these people were actively searching for help, I created a profile, created a cover letter, and started reaching out to those people immediately. So probably like yourself, I actually had a limiting belief in the beginning that was I had to cold call, cold email to get my very first client. And whilst I did try some of that stuff, I got no results. It wasn't actually until I started reaching out to warm businesses on platforms like Upwork that I actually started getting responses and closing clients. So if you're a beginner, you're trying to land that very first client, I highly recommend looking into warm outreach methods, specifically Upwork.com. Now the second thing, you probably have massive limiting beliefs that are holding you back right now. If you're anything like me, you had limiting beliefs like, why on earth would anybody hire me? You know, I'm a beginner. I've got no results to show. I've got no experience. And those limiting beliefs almost stopped me from actually even creating an Upwork profile and reaching out to businesses in the first place. It was just eating me up. I was like, look, there's almost no point even trying to reach out to these people because I've got no experience. There's other people on this platform that do. Nobody's going to hire me. What's the point? It wasn't until I actually pushed through that limiting belief and thought, you know what? I'm just going to give it a go. What is the worst thing that can happen? You know, the upside is I do get a response. The downside is I'm in the exact same position. So I actually pushed through that limiting belief, started my profile, started reaching out to businesses. And on day one of creating my account, I actually had a response. And that response would then go on to be the person called Dom, who was my very first client. So the second tip here really is, is if you have limiting beliefs that are holding you back, just push through them. Because again, worst case scenario, you're in the exact same position. Best case scenario, you get a response, start your agency and completely transform your life. So the third thing, which I think is really important and probably highly relatable to you as a beginner, you'll probably have fear because of the unknown. What do I do when I get a client? Oh, I'm really nervous about jumping on a call with a client. What do I say if they ask me a really in-depth question? You probably have all of these fears eating you up. But similar to point two, if I didn't push through my fears, I would not have got my first client. So just for some context, started with my work profile, started doing outreach. I got a reply from a guy called Dom. Dom then messaged me and said, hey Brad, do you want to jump on a call? Are you free as soon as possible? Now I had a decision to make in this moment. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge huge introvert. And back then specifically, I was really, really low on confidence. So the thought of jumping on calls, anything like that really, really scared me. I'm now a bit more of a learned introvert. You know, I can, I'm a lot more confident when it comes to calls, this YouTube channel and things of that nature, but it wasn't always that way. So I remember at that moment in time, I started having all these things eating me up. Like, oh, I don't think I should jump on a call. My cogs through my head were like, what if this happens? What if in a worst case scenario, this happens? What if this happens? What if? And I had this sort of what if mentality. And you can probably relate to that if you are a beginner. And at that moment in time, I had a decision to make. I could either avoid jumping on the core with the fear of what if something bad happens? What if this question gets asked and I make myself look silly? Or I could jump on a call and actually give myself the opportunity to finally change my circumstances and change my life and take my career in a direction that I actually wanted to go. And obviously I made the decision to do the difficult thing and actually jump on the core. And I remember at that moment in time, I jumped on the core and the nerves that I had, I felt this pit in my stomach. I felt sick. I remember jumping on the core and you could literally hear the nerves in my voice when I was speaking to my prospect at the time, Dom. And so the key lesson here is, unfortunately, when you first start out, the beginning, the start is the most difficult it's ever going to be. If it was easy, then everybody would do it. So you're going to have decisions to make in your life. You're going to have the easy route and you're going to have the difficult option. Nine times out of 10, the difficult thing to do is usually the thing that you should be doing, or it's usually the things that will get you the results. So if you come to those crossroads in your life right now, like I'm too nervous to jump on a call. I'm too nervous to do this. I'm too nervous to do that. What happens if this? Nip it in the bud and just take those forward steps because I I promise you it's not going to be easy but if you do it in years to come now you're going to make major progress in your life and it's the only way that you're actually going to finally get your agency off the ground. So the fourth thing that I did actually after I had that call and I closed my first client is I actually then got proof of concept and I can't really explain the feeling other than the fact I had the proof of concept and I had this almost feeling of euphoria of like now anything can happen and you know I don't recommend that you do this but after I got my first client like I basically made the decision to drop out of uni because I was like right as soon as I've got this proof of concept 
I'm willing to put every single hour and obsess about this business to get it off the ground because I'm sick of my current situation at university, you know, working at co-op and things of that nature. So all that I did is I made a decision to then double down. So I got proof of concept. I found a, a thing that actually worked and then I doubled down on that. So I started rather than then going over to cold calling, cold emailing, Instagram DMing, I doubled down on what worked. And because I did that, I did more outreach that week, reached out to more people. And that's how I actually got my second client in that very same week. So I suppose the tip for you here is, is if you get results, don't try and reinvent the wheel, just double down on what works. That's really how you're going to go from one client up to five, 10 clients in the beginning. You don't have to worry about diversifying your outreach until you actually get yourself to that full-time income level. So the fifth thing that helped me get two clients in my very first week clearly wasn't my experience. It was actually the amount of genuine care and rapport that I actually built with my prospects. So my very first client was actually called Dom. And you know, me and Dom were, were really close. We really got on well as individuals. And if I'm being completely honest, and Dom would probably tell you this himself, Dom hired me because of the level of rapport that we built and the genuine care he could see that I had about helping him grow his business. Because look, when I first started out, I had no results to showcase. I had no proof of work. I had no testimonials. I had no earnings on Upwork. I had literally nothing to show. I had a very bare bones profile at the time. Basically, I had bare bones experience. But because when I jumped on that call with Dom, I really showed a genuine interest in the business. I showed an interest in him as a person and his family life. And we built an amazing connection and rapport. By the time we finished the call and we agreed on a price, there was no other option in Dom's mind other than to come with me, even though I didn't have the experience. Now, look, you're not always going to necessarily get that lucky and find prospects that will go with you just based off rapport. But let me tell you, it is your biggest slight edge and it's your biggest advantage as a beginner. If you can go in there and build an amazing relationship and a rapport, people don't speak about this, but running a marketing agency on anything that's B2B related is a people business. SMMA is a people business, you know? People buy from people. People don't necessarily always buy the service. They don't always buy the product. Ultimately, they buy into the agency, which is led by a person. People buy into individuals. So, you know, slight advantage if you can really show genuine care, genuine interest, and try to build a great rapport with your prospects. Even as a beginner, that's going to give you a huge leg up on your competition. And the sixth thing, and, and this is going to be really important because I think people do get confused about this. You know, you've got all of these creators on YouTube making content about SMA, all these high ticket clients. But my first client was $500 a month. My second client was also $500 a month. And I had Upwork fees and all sorts to pay on that. I think net after all fees, I was making about $700 a month, which at the time was around £500 a month when I actually decided to drop out of university and, and pursue my business. Now, I'm not saying that that's a great idea, you know, and I'm not saying that you should go in and undervalue yourself, but you have to understand your current situation. I think so many times people come in expecting to land a 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K a month client for their very first client when they've got no results to showcase, no proof of concept, no sales experience, no results, like nothing to actually prove themselves. The honest answer is, is look, you're going to have to increase your fees over time, at least if you want the best possible opportunity. My fee, if you look at my fees over the last five years, they've slowly, slowly gone up like this. It wasn't day one, cool, is a 10K a month client or a 5K a month client. Sure, does it happen to people? Yes. Could it happen to you? Absolutely. What is more likely though for you to get success? It's to kind of price a bit more in accordance with your current level of experience because I don't want you longer term as you build experience to be winning deals on price. You know, you want to win deals based off of your experience, your quality, the results you get, you need to value your time. But ultimately in the beginning, you have to understand if you can compete on price a little bit, you know, guess what? There are businesses out there that will actually go with somebody with a little bit less experience. If they can save $500, $250, $1,000 a month on your fee compared to somebody else. And let me tell you now, the amount of experience, lessons and learnings you will get from bringing on clients, the fact that you actually get paid on top of that is a complete bonus. You know, if you look now in my business, if I never landed that first client for 500 bucks, we wouldn't be in a position now where we've worked with some industry leaders, you know, A-list celebrities. We work with Black Lives Matter spending seven figures a month on advertising for them. You know, we've worked with some really big companies, but none of that would have happened if I didn't get my first few clients. And I wouldn't have got those first few clients if I went straight in and priced at 2K a month. So I'm not saying undervalue yourself, but I'm just saying if you need to in the beginning, you can compete on price because the experience you'll get will be worth its weight in gold and it will allow you to get that proof of concept to ultimately long-term be able to actually scale your agency. Now, if you did enjoy this video and you do want any additional support or insight on our services, how we may be able to help you is down in the description down below. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure you check out this one here, sort of come full circle. Here's actually how we landed 17 clients in five days for our agency. So again, a little bit more advanced, but if you're interested, go and check that out. And if you haven't already, click here to subscribe.